Hi, this is Debbie, and um, I hope that you're doing well. Today I want to talk to you um, about a, a subject that sometimes is talked about, and sometimes it's uh, people don't really bring it out because they're afraid that people that they know won't think that they're strong or that there's something wrong with them. There's all kinds of taboos in this world of different things, and one of the things that happens to a great majority of women uh, is sometimes can be taboo and that's um, anxiety and panic disorder. I have lived with anxiety and panic disorder since I was about 28 years old, give or take. Um, the year 28 of my life was a pretty hard one. I had harder but it was pretty hard. I went through a divorce um, uh, to kind of backtrack a little bit. Uh, I had been with the man for almost five years. He, at the time, I thought was a prince and um, we got engaged after a couple of years and I got sick with uh, what they thought was um, fibromyalgia and it is, but turned out that I have lupus too. But this video is, is not about that. Um, toward the first, we were married for a year and a half and towards the end of the first year I noticed a big change in him. And this is not about him. I, will, I won't mention his name. I don't talk to him. I live very far from him uh, as far as I know. I know that his family still lives in the state that I uh, was born and raised. I don't know where he lives. We have no relationship, nothing. We never had children. And as I look back on it now, it was a blessing because I would have had to stay in touch with him. Okay, now on to me. I started feeling um, very scared. And I would get these times where he would go to work and all of a sudden I felt like I couldn't breathe and and I would open up the windows to our apartment and, and that wouldn't help and then I would feel my heart racing and racing and racing and I would have to call a friend or I'd call my mom or my dad and and both of them or one of them would would run over and you know thankfully at that time I lived very close to my parents within like four blocks five blocks so we're there there like that by car and once they were there I would calm down and then I started waking up in the middle of the night and I always felt this doom when this would happen uh, I would feel like I was going to die one day I was in a big drugstore that they had in the Chicagoland area. I can't remember the name of it because they don't exist any longer, but it was sort of like a combination of Walmart, Target, kind of like that. And in the middle of it, I freaked out and I felt like I was like floating above and my body was down below and later, I learned from the emergency room doctor that I had had a panic attack. Uh, they had to rush me by hospital. Again, I felt, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. I, I don't want to die, you know. Um, I lived with my parents after I got divorced, and we decided that we were going to locate to a different state. My parents were already and I was going back and forth whether I was going to stay in the Chicagoland area. I had an opportunity to stay and live with a friend of mine and and I knew her since she was like 11. We were very comfortable with each other and I had no problem. Uh, the only thing is that I had such a problem with these panic attacks that I could hardly work and I was a wreck. I was a wreck. And then I would get mad at myself because I felt like I was becoming this way because of what happened to me. And um, it was very, very difficult. And my mom said to me something 
that made sense. She said, you know, I think right now you need us. And in time, if you, you know, when you feel better, and if you feel like you want to move back, then you can, you know, but I think you should come with us now. And that was one of the best decisions I ever made because I started in this down world, what do they call it? It just, I went from like here to, I went from having a panic attack every week to every day to four times a day um, to being afraid to go anywhere without my parents. I became not codependent, but like I needed somebody with me to go out. And then it became where I didn't care if there were a thousand people with me. I didn't want to leave my home. I wanted, I was comfortable in my home. And that's where I was going to be. If I had a panic attack, I wouldn't look strange to people. Um, I remember having to go back to Chicago for a funeral of one of my most beloved uncles. And I had a panic attack in the, the funeral home. And I was so embarrassed. And I didn't need to be, you know, but at the time I thought people are going to think I'm weird. And that, that is just the, the horrible feeling, you know, and I was always a person that I was worried about what people were going to think about me. You know, would they think that I'm on drugs? Would they think, you know, that I'm drinking? Would they think, you know, that I'm just weird? You know, so a lot of the time and a lot of the troubles I hid, you know, I hid it just with the people that were close to me. And at that time, there was just this very small group of people that really knew what I was going through in my life. This carried on for oh, about just under a year. And my parents were trying to convince me, you know, you need to, we help you, but you need to see somebody that's professional that can help you more. And so um, I began going to see a psychiatrist. And walking into a psychiatrist's office for the first time, I felt just bad. You know, I'm not supposed to be a person that goes to see a doctor like that. And you now I look back at the person and I'm saying, why? You know, it helped you, you know, it was the best thing that you did. So I began therapy with one doctor and then something happened with my insurance. So I had to go to another doctor and I started a therapy. I don't, I'm, I'll try to research the name of it, but the story of it is that I really learned so much about myself, my life, my past. I learned things that I never knew and I'm not going to share it with you because, you know, there's some things I'll talk about here. Like I'm talking about my, my little, not little, but my journey with panic and panic disorder. But there are some things that I just want to keep to myself and I appreciate your respect, you know, um, but through figuring out things in therapy, I was able to kind of start my life again and not really put blame on anybody and not feel bad if I had a panic attack and not feel like I was weird. Um, I was never meant to feel weird by family or friends. It was all me. Um, any time that I've ever been hard on myself, it's never been because someone has made me feel except once, but I, that's in the past and that's not what this video is about. But what this video is about is that there is hope. There are professionals that can help you. Um, I went to a therapist one time here in Florida and I didn't like her from the start. I never went back. See somebody if you feel if you feel that you need to see somebody and make sure you're comfortable with them because you're going to end up talking about a lot of personal things. And if you go see somebody who you feel is controlling 
the conversation, controlling how you feel. Don't, my opinion, search and find someone else. And that's what I did. 20 something years later, I no longer get panic attacks. I will, well, I should kind of take that back. I will get them occasionally, but they are not as severe. Um, I have a way of kind of getting myself out of it. I do take medication once a day in the evening for what, before I go to sleep. I've taken something for a number of years and it helps. Um, I'm in a beautiful relationship for the last 10 years, a little bit more. Um, my relationships with my parents are, I never thought they could be even better and they are even better. Uh, I've always been very close to them. They've always been very close to me and I like it that way. Um, but I'm independent. I have my own home with my husband. I take care of things. There are some physical limitations I have because I have other chronic illnesses, but I'm very strong mentally. I'm, and I know that that happened and they might happen again, but I don't have the doom, if you can understand. I don't have that doom and gloom over my head. So I guess I just wanted to kind of talk to you about it because I've run into people in my life and they've suffered in silence or they've told maybe a small group of people. And I really think honestly, the best thing is to see a professional because they don't have any opinions of you, the right one, and they can help you. So if you're feeling, uh, if you have anxiety, or panic attacks or both, uh, you're not alone. There's a lot of us out there that have suffered, continue to, and some of them, some of us like me that kind of look in the back window and say, I'm stronger now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope that you enjoyed this. And um, if you want to share any of you're, how do I say this? If you have panic attacks or anxiety and you feel comfortable to share it, share it down below, you know, get a discussion going. If you don't feel like you want to talk about it, but you still want to open up to someone. I mean, I'm not a professional and, but I can lend an ear, a shoulder, leave me a message and um, I'll get back to you. I really will. I hope you're having a great uh, day and take care of yourselves. See, see you later. Bye-bye.